Hi writers and welcome to the Write Channel where we talk all things creative writing. My name is Nicola Monaghan and I'm a prize winning author from Nottingham in the United Kingdom and today I'm going to talk you through how to get published by one of the big five publishers. So I've done this myself several times. I've been published by Penguin Random House, I've been published by Little Brown and I've also been published by Scribner in the United States. So I'll talk you through what I've done and how I did it but also general advice for you about how you might get published. So of course it's not easy to get a book deal with the big five. If it were, everyone would be doing it, of course. It does depend slightly on the genre you are writing. Some genres are much easier to place than others. So stuff that's very commercial like crime and thriller and certain types of romance, it can be much easier to get this kind of publishing deal with those kind of books. With heavy duty literary fiction, it can be harder because that market is quite a bit smaller. However, this can be done. I am living proof that this is possible. So the main thing I would say about it all is that you need to persevere and work really hard. And that is the first thing on my list is that you need to keep writing. You need to learn about your craft. You need to make your writing as good as possible in order to try and find this kind of publishing deal. That's not to say that there aren't brilliant writers who haven't got a book deal with the big five and that there aren't brilliant writers who have self-published themselves instead. That, of course, is the case. But if you really want to go the route of the big five, then you need to make sure that your work is second to none. And that perseverance and attention to craft are really important. But you also need to not give up. You also need to keep trying because you're probably going to come up against rejection and hurdles. And it's really important to keep going no matter what. Now, I know a lot of writers like to have this stuff in writing too, so you can download a written guide to this at my website here. So the next thing I would say about getting a deal with the big five is that you almost certainly need an agent. You can send your work direct. Most publishers discourage it and they say that they don't accept unsolicited manuscripts, but they usually do keep them in a place, in a place they call the slush pile. And this is all the stuff that's come in that hasn't come via agents and it tends to sit there in an office or on a desk somewhere and eventually it may get read by somebody, but it might even just be somebody who's doing work experience and isn't very experienced it almost certainly won't end up on the desk of a really good editor or a really good imprint so that is not the route the first thing to do is to get a literary agent so how do you go about getting an agent well the thing that you don't do is print out your whole book and just post it to the agents and say here you go I'm giving you this gift so that you can represent me that's not the way to do it another thing you don't do is write a book proposal and wait for the agent to go to the toilet at a conference and shove your book proposal under the cubicle door now you think that's funny or you think that's silly but somebody actually did that to an agent that I know so you know just bear in mind that those things are not appropriate and not the best way to get an agent the first thing you do in order to try and get an agent is to write the best book you can. And actually, in most cases, to finish that book and make sure it's edited to within an inch of its life. Now, there are some agents, they are the exception, but there occasionally are agents that would like to see your book at a very early stage and who like to work with writers to develop their first novel. And I've met at least two or three people who like to work that way, including my first agent. So my first book I sent out before it was finished. But you need to make sure that you're sending it specifically to an agent who does like to work with new writers in that way because most don't it's definitely the exception not the rule so generally you want to finish the book and get it into as good state as you can on your own before you start looking for an agent now the next thing you want to do is to research the right agent for your book and there are lots of ways to do this one way that I think is a particularly good tip is to look in the acknowledgement pages of books that are similar to your books, because often the writer will have written an acknowledgement to their agent, to their editor, to all the people involved in making that book happen. So often you can find an agent who represents a really similar book if you know a similar book to the genre that you're writing. Another thing is to look out for what agents say about what they want. Now that can be at conferences and events and that kind of thing, but you can find a lot of this out online. So a lot of agents talk about this on Twitter or they have wish lists which they publish on their websites or on blogs of other people. So watch out for that kind of information because it's like gold. You know exactly what an agent's looking for because they've written you a list. The other thing to research is that they're actually looking for new clients. Some agents already have a lot of clients. Now, that may mean that they completely close their list and they're not looking for new people at all. But the other thing it can mean is that it can actually be hard to get their attention. 
However, a lot of agents, when they are looking for new clients, will say so. They'll put out an announcement either on their websites or via social media and make it really clear that they want new clients. So they're the best people to target because they're actively looking for new clients on their books. So you've edited your book and you've got it into the best shape you can. Maybe you've even got people to help you with that. So beta readers or even an editor to look at it with you and you're ready to send your book out. What do you send to an agent? Well, usually it's a fairly standard proposal and that will include an excerpt from your work, which is usually three chapters or 50 pages, a synopsis, which agents ask varying lengths for. So that can change very much agent to agent. And I'll talk a bit more about the synopsis in a minute. And then a cover letter. Now, what I would say about this is something that I've been saying from the beginning of this video, and that's research, research, research. I can't stress that enough. Look at the websites of agents, look at their wish lists, but also look specifically at their submissions guidelines. What do they want you to send them? Find that out and then send it to them. Do not send a general email to the agency, to all of the agents there or anyone who picks it up. Make sure you send your submission, which is usually by email these days, although some agents may ask for it by post. And that's another thing to make sure you know. Occasionally, an agency may say, just send it to our general submissions box. And this is a submissions form and attach your documents here. But unless they say that, pick a specific agent and make sure you send it directly to them. So let's talk about the three aspects of your submissions package. The first one being the writing. Now, I would stress to put this at the beginning of your submissions package. It's likely to be the best part of your submissions package. Hopefully it is. So you want it to be there at the start in the hope that the agent just reads it in the order you've given them. It might be that they have a preference for reading your letter first or your synopsis first or so on. So you only got a limited amount of control over that. But if you put it first in the submission, Submissions package, then they are more likely to read it first. So that's the first thing I'd say about your writing. Put it up front. The next thing, again, I've said this about the whole manuscript and the book you've just written, but it particularly applies to your submission to an agent. You want to make sure the writing's really, really strong. So really well edited, as clean as possible. You can actually either read it aloud to yourself or get word to read it to you, and that can help you polish it to perfection, more or less. The other thing I would say is that that opening needs to really hook the reader. It needs to make sure that they want to read on. I've heard agents talking about how they read submissions and literally saying that they'll read the first sentence of the writing and then maybe the first paragraph of the writing and that they'll reject things on the basis of the first sentence or the first paragraph and certainly on the basis of the first couple of pages. So you really need to get that stuff right. There's a great book on this about how to make the first five pages of your book as compelling as possible it's called The First Five Pages by a guy called Noah Lukeman. Again, I've put a link below, but that is a really, really good read for making sure that that opening is as hooky and as compelling as possible. Kind of think about your agent as being your first reader. So you want to make them want to turn the page and that's really, really important. You also want them to know that you can write and to feel that they're in capable hands. You must send the opening, even if you think a different part of the book's better. And in fact, what an agent would say to you if you said well I've sent the middle bit because I think that's better is why isn't the opening the best bit because it needs to be so make sure you send the opening make sure it's got lots of hooks and that it makes the reader want to read on and then hopefully you'll get an agent looking really seriously at your proposal so the next aspect I'll talk about is the cover letter now the cover letter is quite important there needs to be a short pitch about your book and why this agent should want to represent you and a short pitch about you Keep it short and snappy and be careful what you say, because the most important thing about a cover letter is not to put the agent off. One of the things I've heard agents saying when they talk about this stuff is that they're looking for a cover letter that isn't stupid. Well, that's not a very high bar to reach. There is a really good website about this, Kit Whitfield, and I've linked to it below, where she talks you through the things you shouldn't say in your cover letter, but also gives you a bit of a draft for something that you can start with. So finally, there's the synopsis. Now I will do a fuller video on this at a later date, but just to give you a bit of an overview of what a synopsis is. A synopsis can vary in length. Some agents ask for literally two paragraphs, whereas some want 20 pages. So that's the most important thing. Check what they're looking for and how long they want this to be. 
So what a synopsis actually is, is just a pure action summary of your story. So what happens in your story? If you can answer the question, what happens in your story in as simple a way as possible, then you've got a really good synopsis or you've got the start of a really good synopsis. One of the difficulties with the synopsis is that you know your book so well and you're so well acquainted with all the little ins and outs of the plot that you can go into a little bit too much detail and that's what I find myself doing. What I do to try and stop myself doing that is to try and boil it down holistically. So I usually use the snowflake method, again the link's below in the description, and that can really help me. I write about one sentence that sums up my book, I write a paragraph that sums up my book and I grow it outwards from there and that way I get more of the full picture instead of the ins and outs of the plot. One of the things that can make your synopsis stand out and make it a really good synopsis is if you can take something of the tone or pace or style of the book and put that into the synopsis. So if your book's funny, your synopsis should be funny. If your book's pacey and gritty, your synopsis should be pacey and gritty. You get the idea. It shouldn't be exactly the same. It shouldn't be written as a piece of fiction in scenes or anything like that. It needs to be the pure action. It needs to be quite summarised. And it should also be written in present tense as if it's happening as you go. No particular reason for that, it's just the convention, but we always write third person present tense when we write a synopsis. The main thing that you can do as a writer to get an agent to read your proposal and to take you on is to make it as good as possible. The other thing you can do is to try and form some kind of personal connection. Now you can do that by attending talks and introducing yourself, attending writers conferences, that kind of thing. You can also do it through social media, which is potentially a little bit easier and you don't have to actually leave your home. So you can actually find a lot of agents on Twitter and they'll often tweet about the kind of books they're looking for. So that can be really helpful too. Sometimes agencies will even have or be involved with Twitter pictures. And I've linked to some of that kind of stuff in the description below again. And that can be just a really good way of getting someone's attention. So making a personal connection can be incredibly helpful. One of the things that happened to me with the first agent to ask me for a full manuscript was somebody that I'd seen talk. And I talked about the things she'd said in my email to her, but I also mentioned her shoes because she was wearing a particularly amazing pair of shoes. And I think that she probably looked at my proposal a bit more favorably because I'd made that kind of a personal connection. The other thing is to get to know other writers. And I would say particularly on social media, network and get to know other writers as well as agents because other writers have agents and if they think your work is good and you're the kind of person that they would like to introduce to their agent they might do that and in fact that's how I found my agent in the end through an introduction from another writer. So once you've sent out a great proposal to the right agent that's looking for that kind of fiction and they've read it and really liked it and want to see more they might ask you for the full manuscript. You may want to do another edit at that point just to make sure the work is as good as it can be. If they read the full manuscript and like it, then they may ask to represent you, which is a very exciting part of the process. I found out about this, I was in Boots the Chemist, which is a kind of drugstore in the UK, when I got a message on my voicemail from the agent who wanted to represent me, and I was literally jumping up and down in the shop. People must have thought I was completely mad. But this is how it works, and you will get a phone call or a letter or an email, an email usually actually, from an agent saying that they're really interested in your work and that they want to talk to you about representation. Now, how representation works is that the agent will send your work out for you. They don't charge an upfront fee and they don't charge a reading fee or any of that. So if you ask for that kind of thing, they may not be very reputable. There's a website that I put in the link below about agents to watch out for. So that's quite a good resource as well. But they will send your work out and they'll hopefully get you a book deal and they'll take a commission on that. So there's no upfront cost to you. If that doesn't happen and you don't get an agent with that particular proposal, then time to revisit the proposal. Are there things you can make better about it? Can you improve the synopsis? Is there something going on in your cover letter that might be a little bit off-putting? Perhaps you took a risk with your cover letter, which I don't necessarily discourage you from doing. I think that could be quite good fun and it might get an agent's attention. But if it hasn't worked, try a different approach. Mostly though, look at the writing. Is there stuff that you can do to make that open more compelling, more page turnable and actually hook your agent as your very first real reader. 
At the point at which an agent takes you on, all sorts of things can happen next. They might decide your book's already perfect and send it straight out to publishers. That's actually not the most likely thing. It's actually much more likely that they'll want you to do some editorial on your book. And that's the next stage you'll go through. So you'll often work with an agent directly or with an editorial team within an agency to edit the novel that you've got and to make it as good as possible for submission then to the publishers. So at that point, it's like the whole process starts again. Your agent starts to pitch to the publishers. Now, the real advantage of having an agent is they know exactly which editors and exactly which publishing houses are the right places to send your book because they've got that inside view of the marketplace. And they also know approximately what kind of advance you're likely to get for that kind of book. So that can be really, really helpful and really, really good in terms of making sure you get the right money for your deal. Your agent will usually send a little pitch out about the book. It might be one or two pages, that kind of thing, just giving a sense of the book and you and the background and trying to get different editors interested. They may also have meetings with editors to talk about the books that they're representing and to try and hook them in that way. And these meetings may just take place on an ad hoc basis or over lunch and that kind of thing. Or they may take place in a more formal setting at something like the London Book Fair or the Frankfurt Book Fair. Lots of deals are done in that context. As a writer, this can be the most nerve wracking time because your book's being read and you know it's being read and it's out there with various publishers and you're waiting to see if they like it or not. And so many people have to like your book for it to get published at this kind of publisher. It has to go to the editorial team and then the editorial team have to love it enough to then represent it around their company with marketing, with sales, with distribution, with all the different departments who have a say in whether that book is one that the publisher will take on. So all sorts of things are taken into account about whether they'll take your book on or not. It can be as simple as having a book with a similar title or a similar theme that the sales department have to sell at the same time and that can actually lead to your book being rejected so this is a really quite difficult and harsh process. You might not get a deal with your first book or with a particular book later in your career that's happened to me I mean I got a deal quite quickly with my first book and with my second novel but there have been novels along the way that I've had to give up on because I haven't got a deal with them. The key thing here is persistence. The writers that get their work out there and that continue to get their work out there are those that don't give up and who keep writing, keep submitting and keep going. It's a tough business, as they say. So persistence is everything. The other thing is, I'd say, make sure you write a book that you love because you're going to read that book so many times. You're going to read it when you edit it before you send it out anywhere. You're going to read it over and over again during the process of editing it with an agent. You're then going to read it over and over again in the process of editing it with a publisher. So it's really important that this is a book and characters that you love and that you're able to spend that amount of time with. So that's all about how to get published with one of the big five publishers. Next week, I'm going to talk you through how you might do it with an indie publisher or a smaller publisher. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up because these things really help. I'll see you again soon on The Right Channel and thanks for tuning in.